lecture is going to be the last lecture on chapter 3. We're going to continue the discussion on measures of relative standing and we're going to look at a visual statistic technique called the box and whisker plot. Okay, let's review the concept of a z-score and how we go about finding it. The z-score of a data value indicates the number of standard deviations that the data value deviates from the mean. Okay, so in order to find a z-score, you need to know the mean and the standard deviation. The formula for the z-score of a data value is, okay, z-score of the data value is the data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So you need three pieces of information. You need the data value, you need the mean, and the standard deviation. And when you do this on the calculator, make sure if you choose to do it in one step that you wrap the numerator in parentheses. Okay, so the order of operations is maintained. In symbols for a population, we have x minus mu over sigma for a sample, we have x minus x bar over sigma, I'm sorry, s. Uh, remember that for a population, the mean is mu. For a sample, the mean is x bar. For a population, the standard deviation is lowercase sigma. And for a sample, the standard deviation is s. The symbol for z-score is the same in both cases, z. Each raw data value of a distribution has its own z-score that indicates how far from the mean the data value lies. Okay, so if you have 20 data scores in a distribution, each one of those data scores has its own z-score. Okay, so we are going to convert z-scores back into raw scores. Raw scores are, are considered to be the data values of the distribution before they've been, been converted to z-scores. So if we want to go back, the raw score formula is simply the z-score formula solved for x. So it is the mean plus the z-score times the standard deviation. Okay, for a sample it's x equals x bar plus z times s and for a population x equals mu plus z times sigma. Now these two formulas are not new formulas. If you simply take the formula for a z-score and solve for x, so isolate the variable x, you will arrive at these two formulas for the sample and the population. Okay, so they're really not new formulas, they're just the formula for z-score rewritten with x isolated. What that allows us to easily do is find the raw score x when we don't know the raw score, when we only know the z-score. Okay, so looking at example 3.29, on each of her students' test papers, a statistics instructor writes the z-score rather than the actual test score. Okay, so imagine that at the top of each exam, instead of a, a real test score, there's a z-score. Now, let's remember z-scores are positive and negative numbers that vary, uh, for the most part, 100% of the z-scores will, or 99 to 100% of the z-scores will fall between negative 3 and positive 3. So a z-score is something, you're looking in the range of negative 3 to positive 3. Anything far less than negative 3 or greater than positive 3 is going to be considered an outlier. Okay, um, on this exam, the mean, the sample mean is 72 and the sample standard deviation is 9.6. Determine the student's test score. So that's x. That's the raw score. That's the data value. That's the x in the z-score formula. We're going to round it to the nearest whole number. If the test grade has a z-score of 1.65. And then we're going to do the same concept, but the problem is rewritten to say, is two standard deviations below the mean test grade? and part C has a z-score of 0. 
So let's consider our situation here. We're asked to determine the student's test score, and so immediately we know that we're not asked for a z-score, we're asked for a raw score, so we should be using the raw score formula. We have x-bar 1, s 2, and the z-score, three pieces of the formula. So with those three pieces, we just basically plug into the raw score formula and come up with a raw score. Okay, so in part A, the z-score is positive 1.65. In part B, we have to understand what part B is stating in terms of z-scores. If the test grade is two standard deviations below the mean, then the z-score is negative 2. Okay? A standard deviation that falls below the mean, one standard deviation below the mean would be, the, would be a z-score of negative 1, and two standard deviations below the mean would be a z-score of negative 2. So in part b, the z-score that we're going to plug into the formula would be negative 2. Part c, the z-score is 0, okay, and we're going to plug that into our formula. Okay, so for a z-score of 1.65, let's remember the formula. It's x equals x-bar plus z-s. And we simply plug in what we know. We know that x-bar, the mean, was 72. We know the z-score is 1.65, and we know the sample standard deviation is 9.6. Okay, it's a positive z-score, 1.65, so since it's a positive z-score, you would expect the student's score, test score, raw score, to be above the mean. Okay, it should be greater than 72 because the z-score is positive. So you can plug that into the calculator and you get 87.84, approximately 88 because the question asked us to round to the nearest whole number. Okay, so a student with a z-score of 1.65 has a test score, raw score, approximately equal, equal to 88. Again, the raw score is the x part of the formula. Okay, so you would expect a positive z-score to come up with a raw score that was greater than the mean. A negative z-score is going to come up with a raw score less than the mean. So let's do part B now. Two standard deviations below the mean test grade. This is a z-score of negative 2. Okay? One standard deviation below the mean would be a z-score of negative 1. Two standard deviations below the mean is a z-score of negative 2. Okay? So using a z-score of negative 2, plugging it into the formula with the same values for x bar and s as we had up here. So we're still going to use a 72 and a 9.6. It's the 1.65 in this part A is going to be changed to a negative 2 for part B. Okay, so plugging it in we have x equals 72 plus a negative 2 multiplied by 9.6 you plug that into your calculator, you should get 52.8 rounded to the nearest whole number is 53. The last, uh, and let's interpret the meaning of this, a student with a test score of approximately 53 is two standard deviations below the mean. Okay, now that should make sense because 53 is lower than 72 the class mean, and any z-score that's negative is going to have a raw score that's less than the mean, below the mean. Part C, a z-score of zero, um, doesn't require too much work at all because we know that a z-score of zero is the mean. Okay, In the very center of the distribution, z equals zero represents the mean. So the answer to part C is simply 72, but if you want to plug it into the formula to just verify, you can plug in a 0 for Z using a 72 for X bar and the 9.6 for S. 
Okay, so 72 plus 0 times 9.6. In this calculation, 0 times 9.6 will become 0. And so you have 72 plus 0, or just simply 72. So a student with a z-score of 0 has a test score or raw score equal to 72, which is the mean. Okay, so z-score of 0 is the mean. Any z-score that's positive or greater than 0 would have a value of raw score that is greater than the mean. Any z-score that is negative or less than 0 will have a raw score that is less than the mean. Okay, let's continue.